When we're looking at a subject for a painting, we're often captivated by the centre of interest. It's only natural then that when we come to paint it, we want to get straight to the detail, to get our little brushes out and work on this until it's just right. And sometimes that works, but I've often found that if I start with the detail, the rest of the painting will suffer for it. The reason for this, I think, is that our centre of interest is one of the driving forces behind the painting. And once that's done, it's like, oh well, I guess I'll just put the rest in now. It's easy to lose enthusiasm for the painting when the focal point has already been painted. Also, it's easy to overdo the detail in a focal area by pouring all that starting out energy into it. The way I paint a lot of my work is the opposite of this, and I think of it as setting the stage for the actors to work upon. In the atmospheric perspective lesson I referred to it as smoothing the cushion for the crown jewels to sit on. Basically, it's saving your pudding till last, which I know is hard to do sometimes. You know, you're a grown up now and you can eat your pudding first if you want to, but it tastes even better if you have to wait a bit longer for it. So I use big brushes to start out with, big brushes and loose paint. I can be as loose as I like to start with because I can refine it as I go. It's much easier to refine the focal area of a loose painting than it is to make a tight painting have a painterly look. My rule of thumb for choosing a brush is to find the biggest one you would normally use and then use the next biggest. So long as it's a good brush which keeps its shape, you'll still be able to make small strokes with the tip when you want to. So I may start out with a one or two inch brush or a palette knife and a rag. Then once I have my base colors down, I can start refining things with my middle size brushes, my number eights or number six. Then once I've refined the areas I want to with these and set the stage for the finale, only then do I pull out a small brush for some final little details. Often all a loose painting needs to make the whole thing look real is just a hint of detail in the focal areas. If you get that right, the viewer's brain will fill in the other details for you. And this makes it more interesting for them as well because it's not all spelled out for them. So remember that just like good drawing requires going from the large shapes to the smaller shapes, your painting can benefit from the same approach. It is hard to do because we all really want to eat our pudding first, but just think about how great it's going to taste after you've enjoyed your dinner first. You can get more in-depth painting lessons at livepaintinglessons.com.